protege wax mink. Yeah, not bad. G unit. I would see you at a music <laughs> festival. So Tara and I were out of the office last week. Right. And on you, Destiny Week. On during Destiny Week, which is the worst I'm time to be I'm gone. I'm actually kind of glad that we were gone. So yeah. We got to. Uh, <laughs> The chaos. Separate ourselves from all of that chaos. Yeah. Right. I guess you guys got back, and there were just people having loud opinions about Destiny on the internet. I, yeah, yeah, it was loud. I feel loud. like having read about it on Twitter, it's almost more entertaining than the game itself. Mm. Yes. Because people have such mixed opinions on it. For sure. And I knew this would happen because it's such a hyped game. Yeah. yeah. Yep. Some people are going to be but so angry and disappointed. Some people are going to think it's the best thing in the world. I mean, sometimes games in the get super hyped and buzzy and then satisfy most of their audience in that first week. Mm -hmm. Like Bioshock Infinite, mm -hmm. if you remember, the initial reaction to that game was extremely positive. And I think super the like, Metacritic score reflects that. Um, and I mean, obviously, Metacritic is like a flawed gauge for a lot of reasons. But sure. if you look at Destiny, like because the press didn't get that game early, because everyone got it the same Monday, because the servers went online and people needed to play with actual humans, um, there were no scores for like the first few days of the week mm -hmm. it came out. And then people kind of rushed to review it, and then like Wednesday scores score started yeah. to trickle in, which was interesting. And then over the week, as more and more reviews came in, the scores started to get lower and lower from the people who had played it more and more. And now it's sitting at like a 75 or something, yeah. like, uh, which is not horrible. But yeah. for a game that Activision game that ostensibly thought was gonna like be a huge, a game that they invested $500 million in, according to Bobby Kotick, yeah. I don't think they were expecting a 75 out of 100 quality game. Yeah. You know? I think a lot of that did have to do with them not. I, I, I will never know the reasoning behind not giving review copies to, to outlets, but. Um, well, I thought it was just because they didn't want to turn the servers on early. It was, yeah. It was because, okay. like, they. The way Bungie sees it, it the online component to me, was a central. Yeah, yeah. Maybe. But it's also, like, because it's like an always on game that you can never pause. Sure. Like, you can't really just run around to that world when it's empty, according to them. Got it. Yeah. I see. Which makes sense. I get it, but I, I, from what I was hearing is because it was rushed, a lot of the game starts to get fun after level 20. That's what that's I heard. That's certainly what Bungie's saying. That's not a good excuse, though. If your game is, is is shitty for the first 20 hours, not that I, I don't think Destiny is shitty for the first 20 hours. I just think it's really, really repetitive. Yeah. Um, but like, if your game doesn't get fun until you hit the level cap, yeah. you, you screwed up somewhere. And also, the other thing is that like, I don't even think that they're saying that it gets fun at 20. I think they're saying that a lot of the content is 20. Like people just mm. earlier this week completed the first raid and it took like a good almost 24 hours before anyone beat it. It was 14 hours or something. The, yeah, the team who yeah. completed it uh, died like 1,600 times or something Jeez. and it was a 10 hour raid. And that sounds like the least appealing shit on the planet to me. Yeah, I remember I playing the Destiny beta with, with you yeah. guys and um, or with you at least. And there's that mission in the beta where you fight that spider tank, yeah, and that takes like forever. fucking 25 minutes. And then uh, after that, there's that giant orb that takes like another 30 minutes. And I was like, this is not what I'm interested in. Like, what I like about yeah. bungee shooters and first-person shooters is that they feel like shooting. Like, you can take down an enemy. What I didn't like about Borderlands 1 was that that game really quickly turned into just pointing a reticle at a guy and waiting for his health to slowly go down. It didn't feel like a shooter anymore. Mm. And hmm. shooting a dude for 25 minutes doesn't feel like I'm shooting a gun anymore. Um, and yeah. I think a 10 hour raid with extremely high powered enemies that take forever to take down, that's not the game I want to play. That's not what I wanted Destiny to be. Yeah, I kind of agree. I mean, Borderlands is a little bit more strategic um, because like a lot of the gameplay hinges on like your action skills and your mm. skill trees and like, you can make it as strategic as you want, and you can really like flesh out your character in a way that make that gives it a lot more depth. Right, and none of that's true in Destiny. Like there are three character classes that are mostly identical. Yeah, I mean, I haven't played uh, the final release of Destiny yet. Mm -hmm. I didn't even play the beta. I played the alpha, and, oh, right. and it was, from what I understand, it's an extremely different game now than it is back yeah, then because it was totally barren then. There were like. Mm -hmm three people in my game. Yeah, um, that's actually... They were like, all the quests were exactly the same. Mm -hmm. You know what? It kind of sounds like you're describing the final version of Destiny, though. Like, the maximum party size is still three people for all the missions that are out there right now. Um, it is very repetitive. The quests are kind of walking up to things and pressing square on them. Mm -hmm. So, it's, I don't know. So, do you think you're going to play Destiny now, though? I would consider buying it. I would. I mean, I'm not a huge fan of online multiplayer shooters, mm -hmm. but I feel like of all the ones out there, Destiny appeals to me a little bit more than the others. Um, but it's also hard jumping into a game like that months after release mm. because everybody else just kicks your ass. Yeah. I mean, I feel like that if you're going to play a game like that, you want to do it when it comes out because right. everybody's on the same page. Right. I thought it was fun. Like, so I haven't played nearly as much as you have, Nick, but when I was playing it, I, I found the 
the just kind of like the the going through the different like parts of the world and just like taking on like the really like, like weak grunt guys mm -hmm. to be really fun because like you get a headshot they're like they like get the white like psh, spray like yeah. thing I don't even know it's like electricity static I don't even yeah. know what it is like yeah it's great headshots yeah great headshots and it's really fun and 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 the aesthetics are really appealing um, I don't know there's a lot of things about the game that I think are really fun mm -hmm. and I don't really care if the game is maybe on the on the shallower side or yeah. repetitive side. Will I be playing it, you know, in a month? Maybe not, but I'm okay. I'm okay with it being like what it is right I, now. You know, on some degree, I'm at peace with that too. Because uh, at first, I was expecting something maybe a little more deep and a little more narratively complex. But my favorite memories of playing the Destiny beta that first week, or sorry, the final version of Destiny that first week, um, were moments where I like made new friends over PSN and would just run around a mission like talking to someone who I had never mm. met before and just using Destiny basically as background noise for, yeah. a, for a conversation with your friends. Uh, which like, is not great. Yeah, that's maybe not the highest I mean, compliment ever. Yeah, yeah. no, that's, I'm right. sure that's not what they wanted to achieve. No. But here's a question, how is the story? It's um, practically non-existent. Because like, I thought that was one of the coolest things about Destiny when when they yeah. first announced it. Because yeah. there's like this huge... The Traveler. The Traveler, orb. and it it's like, really what's cool going world. on with that? And then it was like shrouded in mystery for a while. And I, part of me was like, that's really cool. And the other part was like, why haven't they revealed more information about this? Right. And are they even going to? It's, it's yeah. pretty... Underexplained is like putting it generously. There's a lot. Almost every sentence has three made-up nouns in it that don't mean anything to you because they never bother to tell you what they are. Um, and yeah, I don't know. It's <laughs> I, I found it really easy fr from even that first tutorial mission to just gradually start tuning out everything yeah. that that Dinklage was saying. Yeah. Mm. It's funny how when the game was like the how PR and marketing was being so careful to like not have people be calling it an MMO. Right. I didn't expect more because almost every MMO that's come out that's like kind of like jumped on like copying things that World of Warcraft did has been disappointing. Mm -hmm. And everyone's been disappointed by it. And huh. everyone, like a bunch of people will jump on it for a few months, whatever, and then they stop playing it. it this feels so similar. That's funny, because for me, it's like, I actually feel like I have a better understanding now of why they didn't call it an MMO. Mm -hmm. Before Destiny came out, I thought it was because they wanted to avoid the negative connotations of MMOs sure. and the fact that they're they're not necessarily action gameplay oriented mm -hmm. very often. Mm. Um, but now I think they didn't call it an MMO because like it it looks if you squint it looks like an MMO. But when you get in there, it's like you can't hear anyone else on voice chat unless they're in your party. Not even mm -hmm. an online multiplayer. It's actually more restrictive about letting you hear other players than even Halo was. Like mm. in Halo Reach, you can hear everyone if you're close in close enough proximity. You can hear them talking. In Destiny, you could run into some random person in the desert and walk up to them and never hear them mm. ever. And that sounds like a plus to me. I get to be why. Real honest. I, so that was my gut reaction. Right? I was like, I don't want to hear these assholes anyway. But then, like, then make it optional. Ask me if I want to hear other players. That's true. Or not, you know? Actually, I feel like it. Just completely taking that option away from people is a little limiting. There's a lot of things about the game that feel limiting and that make the universe feel smaller. The, like, thing, the thing I've heard most about the game just from watching my Twitter feed is that everybody's just saying that it's just a combination of things from other games. Sure. But it doesn't it doesn't feel like you're like what you think of when you think about an MMO. Right. You know. But I mean, there have been there have been similar like shooter MMOs. You know, it's not something you see very commonly. But like, look at Planet Side. Mm. Yeah, I don't know. I, I, to me, Destiny is most exciting as a proof of concept and a commercial for whatever the fuck Destiny Two is. Like, sure. that's exciting to me. The, yeah. Now that like, if the, if Destiny Two comes out and doesn't have to also work on PS3 and 360, and they actually do something novel that pushes forward and blurs genre lines more, mm. and is actually like a big open world that you aren't just teleporting to and fro. Yeah. Like. That can be neat. Totally. But mm. Destiny, as is, I don't know, I just got like, it, it was fun to, sh it's fucking gorgeous. Like, it is. First I of all, I love the look of it. Amazing art. Yeah. Really, really beautiful, really, really solid core combat. Um, and I never want to play it again. <laughs> like, yeah. I don't. I just burn myself out on it that first week, and I just am like, eh, I'd rather like go back and play Halo Reach, where it's balanced at, like a shooter. I definitely don't think you're alone in that. Yeah? No. It was an interesting experiment, like, and I, I guess they're in it for the long haul, right? It's like a 10-year contract. That's what they said, yeah. They're going to be making a lot more content for it. So I hope, I, I really hope they make the game better. I hope, you know, if this is just the starting point, mm -hmm. and, and, like, they have a roadmap where, you know, I don't know, in 10 years or however long they're <laughs> going to keep this going for, mm -hmm. if it's, like, a new game, like, five times over, 
it could it could grow into something incredible. Yeah. It yeah. could become something amazing. Well, what's, yeah. What's funny is you don't hear anyone being like, Destiny's disappointing. I don't want to. I don't care about Destiny too far. Totally. Like nobody's saying that. I don't say it's even just. Bad. I've heard at least three people compare it to Assassin's Creed One, mm. in that it's like, okay, as a game, this isn't amazing. Mm -hmm. As a proof of concept and the beginning cool of a stuff. next gen thing, yeah. like it's it's an interesting experiment. Yeah. yeah. Maybe uh, maybe Destiny Two will be their Assassin's Creed Two. That would be awesome. I would love that, that would to be, be true. And then we'll just have a Destiny every year. No, no. Destiny 7. Oh, Destiny Brotherhood. Revenge of Destiny. <laughs> yeah. Oh, jeez, I hope not. Please don't annualize Destiny. So the way that it works is they are redoing graphically and sonically um, everything about Halo 2 from a multiplayer perspective. So they've remade a lot of the maps. Um, and that's kind of the brunt of what I got hands-on with. Now, in the multiplayer, they remade Sanctuary, um, which is now called Shrine. They remade Ascension, which I think they might still just be calling Ascension.